The last video for this week is something different, a new topic that will be developed more in week two. I want to start by talking about tangents to loci. Remember that a locus is a shape given by an equation. If the equation is y equals f of x, then the locus of the equation is the graph of the function f. If the function is differentiable, then all of the points on the graph have slopes, and the slopes are given by the derivative of the function. These tangent lines always exist for differentiable functions. But what about other loci? I'd like to ask about the tangent lines and slope for any locus, not just for the graph of a function. How can I do this? Well, that's the subject of this video. I know how to calculate the slope for graphs of functions, the derivative. A common trick in mathematics, which sometimes works, is to pretend the problem is already like a problem I know how to solve, and that's going to work here. I'm just going to pretend that for some locus, y is the function of x. The locus is the graph of a function, and it might not be true everywhere, but it may be true even for just a small piece of the locus. The mathematical term for such a thing is locally. And locally, the pretense might work. And this pretense lets me differentiate in the independent variable x. For any expression in x, this is just a normal derivative. However, there are also expressions in y in a locus. I am pretending that y is a function of x. So these have to become chain rule derivatives. y squared has an outside, y squared, and has an inside, some y of x that I am pretending exists. The derivative is the derivative of that outside, 2y, times the derivative of the inside, dy over dx, whatever that is. That's the approach. It is a strange one, pretending that the locus is a graph, but it will be successful, and it's easier to show in an example. Here is a locus. This is a kind of squarish circle of radius 4. What slopes can I find? Well, I do the derivative using the technique I just defined ordinary differentiation in x, and chain rule in y. This is called an implicit derivative. It's implicit since the function, y of x, isn't known. It's implicitly assumed to be there, but not explicitly defined. The x derivative is 4x cubed, ordinary x derivative. The chain rule derivative is 4y cubed times the derivative of the inside, dy over dx, whatever that is and the derivative of the constant 16 is 0. And now I've differentiated both sides of the, this equation, so it's an invalid operation that preserves the equation. Well, then I have this unknown dy over dx thing, so I'll just solve for it. I subtract 4x cubed, then divide by 4y cubed to isolate the dy over dx, and I get that dy over dx is negative x cubed over y cubed. This is an expression for the slope of the tangent line at a point on the locus. How does this work at some points? Well, this is an expression in both x and y. Unlike the derivative of a function, I need to evaluate at some point x, y on the locus. And be careful. This only makes sense at points which are actually on the locus. I could evaluate this for any x and y, but there is only meaning for this expression if x, y is actually part of the shape in question. So I've chosen four points, which are on the shape. 0, 2, negative 2, 0, the fourth root of 8 and the fourth root of 8, and then the fourth root of 8 and the negative fourth root of 8. And if you put any of these pairs back into the original equation, you will see that the equation is satisfied. These are points on the locus. Then, for each point x, y, I can evaluate the expression negative x cubed over y cubed. This gives a 0, negative 1, and 1 for these three points. However, if I tried to evaluate this, it would be division by 0 at the point negative 2, 0. And this is the risk of pretending something. Sometimes the pretense is just not true. At negative 2, 0, the locus cannot be the graph of a function. My assumption was false, so at that point the technique fails. Here is the graph of this locus, with the four points that I mentioned before. You can see the slopes of 0, negative 1, and 1 at the three points that I calculated on the previous slide. And you can also see what's happening at negative 2, 0. There is a tangent line, but it is vertical, and a vertical line has no slope. So the implicit derivative was not defined. 
This is why the assumption failed here. With a vertical tangent, it cannot be the graph of a function, not even for a very, very small piece of the locus near that point. No graph of a function has a vertical tangent. So this technique is implicit differentiation, using the chain rule to calculate derivatives for loci which are not graphs of functions, but doing so by pretending that they might be, and then finding the slopes of their tangent lines by solving for this implicit derivative.